Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about bones, cartilages, and now we're talking about joints. The last two videos were about fibrous joints and cartilaginous joints respectively. You see fibrous joints in the skull sutures and you see cartilaginous joints usually around the midline, like your intervertebral disc, the pubic symphysis, etc. Today we'll talk about the third and last type of joints, synovial joints. Why do we call them synovial? Because we have a capsule lined on the inside by synovial membrane, which secretes synovial fluid, which lubricates the joint. What's a joint? It's an articulation between two bony surfaces. So far, I have more than 25 anatomy videos on this playlist. Before watching this video, please watch the video titled Bony Markings or Features before this one. And you will need to focus on the articular surfaces of bones because this can determine the type of the joint. Cartilages had three types, hyaline, fibro, and elastic. Pause and review. Joints also have three types, fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. Fibrous joints or synarthroses include the sutures of your skull, the interosseous membranes, and gomphosis, the peg and socket. Number two, cartilaginous joints or amphiarthroses. Amphi, why amphi? It's like an amphibian. It's kind of in between fibrous joint, which allows no movement, and synovial joints, which can allow wide movement. Cartilaginous are in between. Limited movement. Cartilaginous joints include synchondrosis and symphysis. Synchondrosis is the growth or epiphyseal cartilage plate, which is hyaline cartilage. The symphysis include joints that are near fibrocartilage. The first type is temporary, the second is permanent. The permanent type includes the pubic symphysis, intervertebral discs, manubrius sternal junction, and costochondral junction. Today's topic is synovial, also known as diarthroses. Dia means true or certain. That's why we say diagnosis. Dia means true or certain. Gnosia means knowledge. Who is an agnostic? A means no, gnosia means knowledge, agnostic, I don't know. I don't know whether God exists or not. That's an agnostic. So diagnosis means true knowledge of the disease. Similarly, diarthroses mean true joints. Synovial joints are the true joints, can give you wide range of movement. They do have an actual joint cavity, unlike the previous two types. That's why we call them diarthroses. They are true, baby. We're talking about a capsule, synovial membrane, synovial fluid, the whole shebang. That's a true joint. Examples include most extremities. Joints are synovial, like your shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, knee, and ankle joints. Atlantoaxial joint is synovial. Acromioclavicular, synovial. Costovertebral, synovial. TMJ, temporomandibular, synovial. The famous sacroiliac, also synovial, as well as intercarpal and intertarsal joints. Again, the joint is articulation between two bony surfaces. Here is a bone, here is a bone. Each bone is covered with articular cartilage. What kind of cartilage is this? Hyaline cartilage, surrounded by a lovely fibrous capsule, which has a lot of collagen. This fibrous capsule is lined on the inside by synovial membrane which lines everything in the joint except the articular surfaces and if there is a disc or a meniscus in the middle it will not be lined by synovial membrane. The synovial membrane's function is to secrete synovial fluid. The function of the synovial fluid is lubrication which makes your movement way easier. Ask any patient who suffers from synovitis how does it feel? Very stiff. That's why patients with rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus erythematosus or psoriatic arthritis all complain of stiffness. 
Sometimes a part of the synovial fluid will protrude through an opening and then will go to the outside. This is called a bursa. It's a protrusion of the synovial membrane through the joint capsule via an opening or an aperture. Bursa can protect you from impact. They can facilitate movement and provide some lubrication. Therefore, where can I find synovial fluid? Well, you'll find the synovial fluid in the synovial joint, of course, in the cavity, in the bursa, and sometimes in the tendon sheaths. Please take a moment to enumerate all of the synovial joints listed here. Two bones, joint capsule, lined on the inside by synovial membrane, also known as synovium, which secretes synovial fluid. Sometimes the joint will have an accessory ligament outside the capsule for extra protection and stability. These are unstretchable fibers, tons of collagen. We can have other non-accessory ligaments, also for stability. Remember, that's the function of your connective tissue. The synovial membrane lines the internal surface of the joint. Everything except articular surfaces are not lined by the synovial membrane. And if I have an intra-articular disc or a meniscus, they will not be lined by synovial fluid. What are these intracapsular structure? We said the disc and we said the meniscus. The disc is found in the sternoclavicular joint, for example, which divides the joint space into two compartments. The menisci are, of course, found in your knee joint. Sometimes a tendon will squeeze into the joint, such as the tendon of the biceps squeezing into the shoulder joint or the tendon of the popliteus muscle, squeezing in your knee joint. Ligaments can exist inside, such as the cruciate ligaments, anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate of the knee joint. Blood supply of the joint, tons of blood, anastomoses around the joint, very important. That's why if I have septic arthritis, which is an infection of the joint, let's say the knee for example, this can spread very quickly to the bloodstream causing sepsis and septic shock which can kill me. That's for the blood. As for the nerve supply to the joint, it follows Hilton law. What's that? Hilton said, if some nerve fibers are already coming this way to supply the muscle, the same stinking nerves will also supply the joint. That's Hilton law. Remember that the main nerve supply to the muscle is motor and some sensory. We'll talk about that later in physiology. These will help your central nervous system understand the degree of stretch, for example, in the muscle. But the nerve supply to the joint is sensory only. We call them the articular nerves. What kind of movements can happen in a synovial joint? They could be gliding movements back and forth, angular movements such as flexion, extension, adduction, abduction. We talked about them in a separate video in this anatomy playlist. Rotation, just like rotating your neck to the right and to the left. The atlantoaxial joint is synovial. That's a rotation. Circumduction, when you move your shoulder in all directions, it's called circumduction, which is a combination of flexion, abduction, extension, and adduction everything. What are the factors that determine the joint stability? Many factors. Number one, bony factors. And this is a big difference between the shoulder joint and the hip joint. The shoulder joint has a very shallow socket on your scapula. That's why you can easily move it, but everything has trade-offs. It's easily dislocated. Conversely, the hip joint has a very deep socket. What's the good news? It's very difficult to dislocate the hip joint. What's the bad news? It's not as flexible and not as mobile as your shoulder joints, unless you are a ballet dancer, but every rule has exceptions. Next, capsular and ligamentous factors. If the capsule is thick, the ligaments are robust, you'll have a stable joint. Third, muscular factors. The stronger your muscles, the more stable your joints. So, you want stabilized joints? Strengthen your muscles. It's time to exercise. The head of one bone will meet the socket of the next bone, and this is called the ball and socket joint, such as the hip joint and such as the shoulder joint. Let's talk about the different types of synovial joints, shall we? So cartilages are three types, joints are three types. The third one is synovial. 
This synovial type of joint has gazillion subtypes. You can classify them according to the shape of the articulating bone, the number of articulating bones, and the axis of movements. Let's talk about the shape. We have a plain joint, just two flat surfaces hugging each other, such as the acromioclavicular joint. Nothing crazy. What kind of movement will I get? Only gliding or sliding movement. That's it. Next, pivot joint. The best way to understand it is to remember the bolt and the nut. The bolt is rotating inside the nut, just like how the radius is rotating like this near the ulna. And don't forget this annulus. So example of the pivot joint is the superior radio-ulnar joint in your forearm. What kind of movement is possible? Rotating around one axis. What do you mean? Rotating around a longitudinal axis. Next, the hinge joint, like the door hinge. The movement will occur around a transverse axis, such as the elbow joint and the ankle joint. Next, ellipsoid. We have a convex surface here and a concave surface receiving it here. Example is the wrist joint. This will allow movement around two axes. For example, you can flex and extend, but you can also adduct and abduct your wrist. Next, condylar or bicondylar joint, like the knee joint. Two convex condyles are hugging two concave articular surfaces. The condyles belong to the femur, the concavities belong to the tibia. The main movement here is flexion and extension, and you can have some very limited rotation as well. Next is the saddle joint. If you look at the saddle carefully, it is concave if you look at it this way. But if you look in another plane, it is actually convex. So it's the same saddle, the same donkey. One surface is concave convex. Ooh. And this will articulate with another concave convex bony surface. This happens in the first carpo metacarpal joint of your thumb. And if you've watched my rheumatology videos, we have talked about CMC1 before in a disease known as, let me know the answer in the comments, which rheumatological disease has inflammation of first carpometacarpal joint specifically. Based on the shape, the last type is the ball and socket joint. This is the easiest one, shoulder and hip, wide range of movement around many axes. Classification depending on the number of the articulating bone could be simple, compound or complex. Simple joint, just two bones. Look at this, that's a simple joint. How about compound joint? more than two bones, such as your elbow, for example. Complex is the one that has the whole shebang. It has bones, it has discs or menisci, it has ligaments, it has everything you want. Let's take it to the clinic. If you remember my video on rheumatoid arthritis, what did we say? It's an inflammatory arthritis, not just local inflammation, systemic inflammation all over the body. It can affect small joints, mainly, more common in females than males, it's a chronic disease with acute flares. If you do joint fluid analysis during the acute attack, you'll find tons of neutrophils because it's an inflammatory arthritis. And every inflammatory arthritis has what? Synovitis, which means what? Joint stiffness, because my synovial fluid, may he rest in peace, used to help me lubricate my joints, but now I cannot do it. Moreover, the synovial membrane is inflamed. Ouch. And every synovial joint can be involved in rheumatoid arthritis. Do you think these people get atlantoaxial instability? Absolutely. It can be an emergency. They can break the spinal cord especially if the doctor is a doofus. Never ever hyperextend the neck of a patient with active rheumatoid arthritis. That's a grave mistake. And to your grave you should go, doofus doctor, metaphorically speaking. And then after we put you in your grave, we will add the stethoscope on top and we will write, here lies a doofus doctor who hyperextended the neck of a patient with rheumatoid arthritis causing atlantoaxial subluxation and 
quadriplegia. I am yelling at you because I want you to remember this because I want you to take good care of your patients. Do you think patients with rheumatoid arthritis can suffer from acromioclavicular problems? Yeah. Costovertebral problem? Yeah. TMJ? Big time. Sacroiliitis? Big time. Not just rheumatoid, but also the seronegative spondyloarthropathies like ankylosing spondylitis. All of the inflammatory arthritides can have synovitis because medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. To learn more about rheumatological diseases, just watch my rheumatology playlist here on YouTube. More than 75 videos. If you want to learn about orthopedic surgery and cardiothoracic surgery and trauma surgery, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download load my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.